today we are discussing the topic linear method of surveying in this section we are discussing uh, chain surveying different instrument used for chain surveying and survey stations survey lines and ranging linear method of surveying the method of surveying in which only linear measurements are made the most known linear method of surveying is chain surveying chain surveying is the simplest method of surveying in which only linear measurements are made in chain surveying only measurements are taken in the field and the other works such as plotting and calculation etc are done in office this is the most suitably adapted for surveying of small plain areas with a very few details the various instruments used for chain surveying are chain tape ranging rod arrows pegs cross stuff chain chain are made up of galvanized mild steel connected link by link by circular ring each chain having 100 links the ends of the chain are provided with a brass handle normally a 20 meter or 30 meter metric chains are used next one tape based on the material tape may be of cloth tape or metallic tape or steel tape or invar tape etc among this invar tape is used linear measurement of a very high degree of precision and it has a very low coefficient of thermal expansion ranging rods ranging rods are used for marking stations or ranging intermediate points it is available in length of 2 meter to 3 meter they are painted in alternative color either black and white or red and white each color band having 20 20 cm length arrows arrows are uh, marking pins made up made up of 40 mm diameter steel wire one end of uh, arrow is made sharp and other end is bent in a circle for fa uh, facility of carrying an arrow is inserted into the ground after every chain length measured on the ground generally 10 arrows are supplied with a chain pegs it is used for marking stations which is made of wood and one end of the peg is sharpened for inserting to the ground and cross staff cross staff is used for setting perpendicular offsets uh, one end of the cross staff is provided with uh, an arrow slit and other opposite end is provided with a cross hair and while sighting through this uh, narrow slit uh, we can first of all make this narrow slit uh, parallel to one line ab then sight through other narrow slit and make a perpendicular offset dc other than these instruments uh, some tools like plumb bob flags boards etc are also used in chain surveying these instruments are not that much important next is survey stations a survey station is a prominent point on the chain line there are two kinds of survey stations main station and subsidiary or tie station Survey stations either at the beginning of the chain line or at the end are called main stations and subsidiary or tie stations are the points selected on the main survey line which is necessary to locate the interior details suppose uh, this is a chain survey closer chain surveying having chain lines a b b c c d d e a e etc and this uh, here a b c d e are main survey stations and if we want to locate one building inside here we may run one subsidiary line or subsidiary chain line here fixing two stations as f and g this uh, f and g or these f and g stations are called subsidiary stations this is used for locating interior details survey stations can be marked on the ground by using wooden pegs 
uh, which can be inserted into the ground if the ground is soft but in case of road and streets it is not possible to insert a wooden pegs in such cases uh, we are making two or three measurement with respect to some permanent reference objects near the station next uh, survey lines main survey line the lines joining main survey stations then base line the biggest of main survey line this line passes approximately through the center of the field all other measurements to show the details of work are taken with respect to this line uh, suppose uh, we are having a field like this we run survey lines as a b b c c d and d e here a b c d e are main survey stations and a b b c c d d e and a e are main survey lines uh, in this uh, area uh, we can run a baseline from e to c which will pass through the center of the field approximately and we can uh, locate the interior details from this baseline by making offsets from this baseline next uh, uh, check line or proof line check line or proof line are the lines which are run the field to check the accuracy of the work the length of a check line as measured on the ground should agree with its length on the plan a check line may be laid by joining the apex of triangle to some fixed points on any two sides of a triangle or by joining two points on any two sides of a triangle that is check line or proof line is used for uh, checking the accuracy of the work here we can see the dotted line as check line and this line as base line check line may be connecting from apex of the triangle to the uh, other other side opposite side of the triangle uh, these are uh, different examples of check line check line ca may can be drawn by connecting two points on two lines tie line or subsidiary line line which joins subsidiary or tie stations on the main line it helps to locate interior details it also serves the purpose of check line as we said earlier uh, main state there are main stations tie stations the line connecting main stations is called main survey line and the line connecting uh, tie stations or subsidiary stations is called a subsidiary line here in this figure we can see the boundary of the field and chain line is run along the along the boundary and we have uh, run a baseline almost center to the uh, field from this baseline many details are located by, by taking offset from the this baseline and also we can see one check line running from one corner to other corner that is apex of one triangle to the baseline and apex of another triangle to the uh, same baseline this check line can be used for uh, checking the work checking uh, the accuracy of the work also we can see one tie line here there are two subsidiary stations on the main survey line this is main survey line we can select one subsidiary stations here also one subsidiary station here a tie line is running uh, for locating interior details that is uh, details about these buildings uh, we are run we, we can run a tie line uh, different university questions uh, define the different types of survey stations and survey line main survey line main survey station subsidiary stations tie stations etc main survey line and subsidiary survey line tie survey uh, tie line etc having five mark question uh, 2018 april get you question next uh, define the terms a yeah, three mark question define the terms baseline check line and tie line just uh, write the definitions we will get the three mark explain survey stations and various survey line in chain surveying five mark question from uh, 2018 december get you question paper next uh, ranging the process of fixing intermediate points between two chain points is known as ranging if we want to fix one intermediate point between 
two survey stations there are two methods direct ranging and indirect ranging in direct ranging direct ranging is done when two ends of the survey lines are intervisible if the two end of the su survey lines are intervisible in this method one ranging rod is erected by surveyor at both ends say a and b of survey line the assistant then goes with another ranging rod and establish the rod at a point approximately in the line with ab by moving with the instruction from surveyor at a and b suppose there is a survey line ab we want to fix one uh, point in between a and b in line with ab a ranging rod is erected at the point a and b and a surveyor uh, goes with one another ranging rod Uh, to fix the point C, uh, a surveyor from both end A and B, uh, having given instructions to the surveyor at point C, to fix uh, an intermediate point, intermediate point C between uh, in the line AB. This is the direct method of ranging. Next is indirect ranging or reciprocal ranging. indirect ranging is used when both ends of survey lines are not intervisible either due to intervening ground or due to long distance between them in such cases the ranging is done indirectly by selecting two intermediate points m1 and n1 very near to chain line in such a way that from m1 both n1 and b are visible and from n1 both m1 and a are visible the person at m1 then direct the person at n1 to move to new position n2 in line with m1 b we can explain this with a figure here there are two points a and b these uh, two points are at a large distance and which is not intervisible from a we can't see the point b and from b we can't see the point a then uh, this is an elevation and this is a plan we can explain using this plan select two points m1 and m1 and n1 such that from n m1 we can see n1 and b and also from n1 we can see m1 and a the person first step is the person at m1 direct the person at n1 to take a new position n2 such that the person at m1 n2 b are in a line in a, in a same line that is this m1 n2 b are a straight line then the person at n2 direct the person at m1 to take a new position m2 such that a m2 n2 are in a line similarly uh, continue this process and Finally, we will get two points M and N in line with A and B. We will get two intermediate points M one N, M and N in line with A B. Here, N is in line with M and B, and M is in line with A and N. That is, A, M, and N are in a straight line, and M, N, B are in a straight line. a previous university question what is ranging and explain the types of ranging 